As someone who grew up as a competitive athlete, getting involved in the fitness industry seemed like the natural next step, especially given the weight loss I experienced around that time. Instead of racing as my competitive outlet, at that time, I was just becoming competitive with the people I saw online. I thought I had to build muscle, be extremely lean, and train to eat to fit in. cardio anti-carb and the rise of the hybrid athlete so this is a video I've been wanting to make for a while just discussing the impact that I believe the fitness industry had on diet and exercise and fitness in terms of endurance athletes so let's dig in and start with the first thing I said which is anti-cardio so anyone who knows me well will know that I discovered the fitness industry around 2014, 2015. And so that shapes my view of the fitness industry and what it was or is. And if you weren't involved in it at that point, I'll give a brief overview here. So I got involved via Twitter. Um, excuse me, sweating. I've been cleaning. Um, so I got involved via Twitter and I, at the time had just started a blog and was trying to sell products from an MLM I was involved at the time. I actually really do like the products sales, not so much for me because I'm not going to be cold calling my friends, but that's beside the point. Whole other topic is the two times that I've gotten into MLMs. Um, so got involved via Twitter. So there was the whole hashtag fit fam at the time. And that's really where things kicked off. And then from there, everything obviously shifted over to Instagram as being the primary form of social media at the time. Obviously, the trends change over time very much in that space. So that's kind of where I would say those two platforms are where I had the most history. So at the time, what I saw a lot of personally was women beginning to lift weights, which is an awesome thing. So, excuse my coworker here. Like I said, at the time, there was a lot of women beginning to lift weights and lifting suddenly became okay for women. For me personally, I do come from that background. Of, I used to think lifting made all women bulky. Um, obviously a very unhealthy thing to think because there are so many benefits to weightlifting. So that was where we were at the time, but the problem that I saw come out of this and that impacted me personally was that cardio was then demonized. Now, I think it's also important to look at where some of these women were coming from. So there were a number of women I followed at the time that came from backgrounds of disordered eating and exercise and cardio can be part of the symptoms of disordered eating. I'm not a health professional, so I'm not gonna get into anything beyond that. But the other thing that I think really, but the thing actually that I think really did demonize cardio at the time was that people were afraid of losing their gains and so that shaped so much of the fitness industry at the time. So that for me personally created this mindset where because I was an endurance athlete, I also needed to essentially work twice as hard to be able to fit in with this community. So I really felt like to be able to fit in with that community, I didn't, I needed to focus also on strength training, which I do think is very beneficial. But at the time, I was strength training three, four days a week on top of all my endurance training. 
because I thought that's what I needed to do to really fit in. I thought I needed to be building muscle. I thought I needed to make sure I was eating plenty of protein so I wouldn't lose the muscle I'd built. And that really honestly for me personally was not a great place to be in mentally. Obviously trends do cycle through so it's kind of interesting to me now to see how things have changed. So science is really, I mean the science was probably already there but the popular science as I'll call it because there's always those things that people kind of like hold on to. Um, like at, uh, when I searched for my um, weight loss and triathlon video everything was comparing like endurance training and weightlifting and which one's better for weight loss when I was really just looking for talking about doing endurance training while trying to lose weight so and that was really a big part of everything that point was that people were saying well lifting weights is actually going to help you lose weight more too so that was another big thing at the time but everything does cycle in and out so I'm I've been really interested to see recently as I've started to like pay attention to these communities more again I've started to see a few things. So I've seen some people that were involved with bodybuilding moving out of it just because either they did not enjoy it or that's what's healthiest for them. And I do really like seeing people starting to take that perspective of doing what's healthiest for them or what they enjoy versus what's popular. So for me personally, I finally realized I'm never going to want to train like a bodybuilder even though I was at the time just because that's not how I enjoy training. So I do think that things cycle in and out and hopefully this kind of movement towards people doing what they truly enjoy is going to stick around um, and maybe that this whole Pilates thing will die out. Don't even get me started on the number of people moving to that, which again, if that's what somebody enjoys and gets them moving, that's not a problem. I just think that that's what the fitness industry needs to be promoting is we need to promote moving how you want to and how, what feels good to you and what you enjoy versus feeling obligated to do a certain thing like weightlifting versus cardio, especially because even for me personally, the term cardio honestly makes me cringe at this point because to me it's sports specific training. Um, so that's kind of where I stand at that. So gonna put the laptop on the dog so I can see my notes better um at the end of the day I believe in training how you feel and what makes you feel good and just doing things you enjoy I'm headed on a trip literally to ride bicycles in Europe so I'm very excited for that um and that takes us into our next point of anti-carb so my camera cut off in the middle of filming I thought I had enough battery to get through the entire video and obviously I did not so that's fun um, so we're gonna go back to anti-carb and I'm just gonna start over because I don't actually know the last thing that I filmed on it um, so anti-carb when I talk about it I'm talking about a number of things and when I talk about these things I think it's important to make the differentiation that I'm talking about these things the way they're seen in the fitness industry, in social media, on Instagram, YouTube, TikTok, whatever else there is because I'm a little bit behind on social media. And so I just want to make that clear because I'm going to talk about it from that like kind of popularity trendy standpoint, not from the standpoint of actual medical advice you would get from a physician. The best example being keto, which actually historically came about for medical purposes and not for diet purposes so without continuing to ramble too much what am I encompassing when I t when I say the word anti-carb I am talking about keto paleo and the traditional bro diet so keto paleo I feel like if you're familiar at all with those like or if you're like in the fitness world at all you kind of have an idea of what those are like or what any of this is so keto talk, keto talking about a low very low carb high fat high protein diet so i'm talking about people that are going to most of their calories are going to come from sources like meat um so think about no grit like very little to no i mean i'm not 100 familiar because i've never followed this diet but i would talk about like 
little to no grains um another one of our carb sources is vegetables and you kind of do have people that go to the extreme of like they go on a no carb diet where they are i mean almost completely carnivores so they're eating like a lot of meat cheese dairy um which you obviously contain small amounts of carbs but that's keto paleo i actually don't 100 like I know it's very unprocessed. I know it's very popular from the CrossFit communities because I remember like when I did CrossFit, there was like a whole like quick like hour long session that you go to where they talk about nutrition. Um, and then the traditional bro diet. So when I talk about the bro diet, I am talking about the piece of fish or chicken. Like I'm talking about like either like tilapia or cod, a piece of chicken. A green vegetable some like usually I think people would have like asparagus or broccoli maybe green beans um, and then rice would typically be the carb source we would see in the traditional pro diet so that's what I'm talking about was kind of like over I'd say again like the last 10 years that I've been in the fitness industry those are the things that have been really popular and I understand to some extent like I do understand one of the big reasons they became popular is that a lot of people don't consume enough protein and I will admit I am one of those people. I've talked about I literally bought protein powder for that reason because I just don't like enough protein sources. So I do understand where that came about. Um, the general recommendation for protein intake is one gram per pound of body weight. There is some additional sources now that have said that's a little bit outdated and that there are different recommendations. I would say personally like for me. I definitely need more protein from the standpoint of I need to make sure I am recovering from workouts, both strength and endurance. Uh, but I also tend to favor more, my diet tends to work better for me if I make sure I also have enough carb sources in there. If anything, like I should really be cutting fat out more, but I really like fats. So I'd say you really need to look at what type of activity you're doing and then also what tends to work best for you and not just go with oh everybody says like i mean you can go back to like the atkins diet of the early 2000s where everybody's like oh low carb is the way to lose weight you need to just eat high protein i'm like it really depends on what you and your body need um obviously if you're looking to build muscle yes you're going to need a higher protein diet Average people though don't really need a special diet like keto, paleo, any of that in order to be successful in their fitness goals. Average people, you need to make sure you're getting in your micronutrients. You need to make sure that you are eating a well-balanced diet. So getting some protein, carbs, and fats at each meal. But I don't think anybody needs that special diet unless you're under the advisement of a medical professional such as your physician or registered dietitian who is treating you for a condition and has recommended that. And I think that's where a lot of things have gotten confused is that everybody sees these diets and even if like, so the keto diet, I believe, and this is going like on third hand information. Um, so Brianna Jewell on YouTube has talked about the keto diet before. And if I remember correctly from her video, the keto diet actually came about to treat ep epilepsy in children. So if you're not a child with epilepsy and you are not under the guidance of a physician, do you really need keto? That is my keto rant. Um, but so all of this went on to basically demonize carbs. And it definitely, for me, it created this kind of like struggle because obviously as an endurance athlete, you need carbs or in my opinion, you need carbs. I have a separate video I'm working on where I will actually get into someone that doesn't like carbs. Um, and so one of the reasons you need carbs though is carbs actually help like in my, like from my knowledge, again, not a medical professional, they do help your brain function. So a lot of people talk about when they're dieting, like having brain fog and everything. I personally have found like I don't do as well on a low carb diet. One of the other kind of things that has come out of this is still, even though I think we've moved away from it somewhat, I do think there are more people promoting like healthy balanced eating. If you're trying to lose weight, it truly is calories in versus calories out for most people. There are still people out there 
I watched a video from a content creator who he's lost a good amount of weight recently. He, um, and not like somebody who's even overweight trying to lose weight, just somebody that is trying, is on a cut currently. And he made the comment that a rice cake with a laughing cow is the closest you will come to a bagel with cream cheese on a cut. And this is kind of that diet culture that still to this day bothers me. I am cur currently in a fat loss phase. I am making slow, steady progress. I'm actually eating a bagel with cream cheese every single day. Um, and I would say that for me has come from over time just kind of getting out of that mindset of the diet culture and realizing that in order to achieve my goals, I can't do exactly what seems popular in social media. And I think that is what a lot of people are coming to realize and need to realize because for a while, I mean, I went through a lot of different breakfast phases. In college, I would either have a Starbucks egg and cheese sandwich or I would have a low sugar oatmeal. And I mean like one packet of low sugar oatmeal I don't even want to think about how I thought that was a sustainable breakfast. Maybe I had a banana too sometimes. Um, and after college, again, I continued with the Starbucks breakfast sandwich for a long time. They actually got rid of the breakfast sandwich at some point though. I had Panera egg white and cheese sandwiches for a while. I went on a kick where all I was eating, like I was making my own oatmeal every morning. So I would do, that one was actually like, as far as my oatmeal phase went, that one was actually probably the most balanced and healthy. So I would do um, just like regular oatmeal with, I would add soy milk, egg whites, usually some powdered peanut butter or real peanut butter and zucchini for volume. So I was getting protein in it. And so that did create a little bit better balance. But again, I was doing it because I was trending that was whole like volume eating thing. So what I would like to see in this space, and unfortunately this one hasn't grown as much as the like type of movement people like to do. What I would really like to see in this space is more acknowledgement that nutrition is not one size fits all and that you can't just give blanket nutrition advice of, oh, this diet's the one that's going to work. So my last comment there is just that while for me personally, I've outgrown this, I do think that the fitness industry as a whole still has a long way to come in terms of nutrition. And I do think that this continued kind of anti-carb special diet thing thing that's the best word i can come up with for it does have a negative impact on people both in i would say in all types of fitness but especially for people that are involved in sports where you might need those like need more carb sources i do think it is negatively impacting that so i'd like to see more acknowledgement that one, everyone is different, so we all have different nutritional needs, and also that the type of movement you're doing can influence the your nutrition needs as well. While well, I do understand for endurance athletes, we're not one size at all. We don't all need a ton of carbs. There are people that become fat that can become fat adapted. I know personally, I'm not one of them, so I just like to see more acknowledgement that nutrition needs are much broader than what they seem to be on the internet. Now, the last thing I wanted to touch on, and this is what kind of all this to me has built to, so seeing the changes in the fitness industry over the years, it's all kind of built to what I've seen recently. And so there are two, actually two things I think that have built to this. And one I think of, one I think is super positive. Another is speculation that I've seen online that I really hope is not how people have ended up in this space. And that is the rise of the hybrid athlete. So first, I think we need to talk about what necessarily is a hybrid athlete. And I would just say that based on what I've seen, uh, the way people are defining this is as someone who has both strength and endurance goals at the same time. Um, the first person that comes to my mind is Nick Bear. Nick Bear did my i mean i don't follow him closely i do remember when he trained for his first iron man um he came i believe from a bodybuilding background or another strength background 
Um, and now he puts out a lot of content on his hybrid training and the different like endurance events that he is going on to train for. I think that he has done, like I really actually think he's done a lot of good in that space because he is showing people that both can be done at the same time and you're not gonna suddenly lose all of your muscle by also pursuing endurance sports. It, although I will say it may be harder to gain muscle while also training heavily for endurance sports. That's not to say it's completely impossible. You do just need to be watching your nutrition very closely. So I think he's actually done a great job. I think he has definitely been a, I mean, I don't know a ton about him personally. Again, I just know what I've seen on social media. Um, I just think for endurance, like for endurance sports, I think he's done a lot of good by being in that hybrid athlete space. The other one I would say, again, I don't know a ton of people in like, I've seen a couple other people pop up just through like YouTube searches, seeing like what's out there. But the other kind of larger name that I would say I've seen a lot from is Natasha Ocean. Um, so I watch like a few of her videos here and there. Um, I will say like with her content, I'm kind of 50, 50. And when I say 50, 50, I think she does a great job with educational content. And she actually just put out a hybrid running and strength program that has options for if you want to be more running focused, if you want to be more strength focused, or if you want equal balance between the two. So I would say her educational content is great. I, the one thing I would say that I don't think is great from her content sometimes is that she does some challenges sometimes like the 24 hour run um that she was like that was like out in las vegas which was i believe partnership with lululemon or the ultra she did with no training i haven't actually watched that full video but the reason i say i don't think that that content as is as beneficial is just that I think people need to one realize her background so she does come from a endurance and athletic background and two I think that sometimes those types of videos people get the wrong idea about endurance training and endurance racing um, just from the standpoint of one no you can't just get up and do it like a lot of these people that do these types of challenges are trained athletes before they go on to do them. And the other thing is that those can actually be very dangerous in terms of promoting injury. So that's where I would say I don't 100% like all of the content she puts out, but I do think she does a great job with educational content. I really liked that she's been pretty transparent about being injured recently and everything she's doing for that because she is training for a 100 mile run. She just put out a video that I haven't watched yet. I don't know if her plans have changed due to the injury. Um, but like I said, I think she puts out a lot of good educational content. There are some other names that have popped up in my searches, but it's people I'm not as familiar with. And then I wanted to obviously bring all this back to myself. So as you saw at the start of this video, I had some commentary just on how, I guess the best way to put it is how all of this affected my mindset over the years. And... It definitely impacted me negatively for a very long time just because I thought my goals needed to be aligned with what was popular versus what is true to myself and true to what I want to do. And that's where what I call the rise of the hybrid athlete I think is a really good thing because, and again, this is looking at from this first perspective, which I do think is good because it is telling people that you can do both, you can do what you want. I don't know if I would 100% consider myself a hybrid athlete because most of my strength training is still geared towards injury prevention and strength for cycling and running. But what I would say is that I do really enjoy that. So I definitely, even if I wasn't training for triathlons, I would also still be doing all that strength work because I do enjoy it. So I guess that does put me in that space. The other item I wanted to touch on in this hybrid athlete space is the negative side of it. Um, unfortunately with fitness, there is always a negative side, especially when it comes to like the popular fitness industry type fitness. And that is, and this is again, speculation. Um, I was actually going to do a quick search. So I read sometimes. And I don't love all the content on here. I just get bored. 
um, the Jim Snark subreddit, which I literally don't even use Reddit other than this. Um, so this person noted they've only, they mostly follow female fitness influencers, which I kind of follow a mix, like a weird mix. Um, so they're saying that there's all these people who have been promoting weightlifting as the end all be all of fitness for years. And all of a sudden when thin is in, they decide to pick up running. So when we're talking about thin is in, they're obviously talking about kind of this, the trend is starting to go away from the curves and back to this like really stick thin body of the early 2000s. Um, and they're starting to, there's definitely been a rise in the number of fitness influencers taking up running and becoming hybrid athletes. And this is where I do see some concern in it just because I feel like people need to make sure they're doing stuff for the right reason. Like I said before, I think that we need to make sure people are participating in these things because they're what they actually enjoy, not because it's what's trendy, not because what this person, the point this person is trying to make is that it is a way to lose weight. So I did just want to touch on that here at the end because I do think it was an important perspective that while my hope is that that's not the reason people are doing this, it is an important perspective to make it known that yes, there is this other kind of item that might be influencing this but hopefully again that's not what's actually going on so in summation i guess i think that or what i hope is that the fitness industry doesn't continue to be as cyclical as it has been because i'm hoping that people will come to the realization that at the end of the day fitness should be what you enjoy so for me that is endurance training. That is also some strength training. And I understand like I work out with a personal trainer that she is training to compete in bodybuilding competitions. And so I think just having that, it's just really important now that we grow and have that understanding that not everyone has the same goals and that is okay. And that there is space. I mean, there is literally a space for everyone in this community and that is kind of the final point I wanted to make with this video that kind of analyzed how things have changed, how I think things have been, how I think endurance training has been impacted by this. And I would definitely say to stick around for my video I am doing on motive, which is trap on Taryn, Taryn's motive method um, and his, the training app that he has put out because when I was talking about anti-carb, there's definitely some more content coming there in the next couple weeks while I finish up that video. Um, I'm, I've been looking at and sort of using the app for about a week now, and so I'll continue for another week on that, and that video should be out once I get back into the US from my vacation. So if you did find anything interesting, beneficial, or just really enjoy listening to me talk, please hit the like and subscribe buttons down below and I will catch you in the next video. I've moved on. I don't fear losing gains or over losing muscle from taking my dog on a long walk on the weekend. And at the same time, I didn't go the opposite direction. So I don't fear gaining too much muscle that's going to make me look bulky or that's going to make me look manly or negatively impact my endurance training. Instead, I have finally found with training and nutrition kind of this happy space where I can train and eat right and really focus on my goals without feeling like I'm doing something wrong or like I'm not fitting in with the rest of the fitness community.